Hello. Uh, hello. Uh, good morning. Uh, welcome to multi-site OpenStack for OPNF for NFB. Uh, let me introduce our team first. Uh, this is the three player from Brock, and uh, this is Dimitri from Ericsson, and uh, I am Cao Yi Huang from Huawei. Uh, in this session, we will talk about the gaps and the challenges in uh, multi-site OpenStack for NFB. And uh, we also will talk about uh, the projects like uh, Tech, Kimbus, and the Tricycle to address the gap and the challenge. And at last, we will talk about uh, how these projects can collaborate uh, with each other in different uh, scenarios. Um, let's first talk about the gap and the challenge for uh, multi-site OpenStack for NFB. Um, we identified that uh, there are some features missing in OpenStack to support uh, disaster recovery in multi-site scenario. For example, for Nova, uh, currently only support a single virtual machine consistency snapshot. So it's not good enough to support uh, application level consistency snapshot for disaster recovery. So we filed a spec in NOAA to support uh, application level uh, snapshot, and uh, so that the snapshot could be used for disaster recovery, and the code uh, hopefully will be merged in Newton. And uh, we also identified that uh, uh, lacking the feature for volume level replication in volume replication version two, we will uh, discuss with the community uh, after the replication version two finished. And uh, um, in NFB, we have to deploy the uh, multiple VNF in different uh, sites, but uh, there are some gaps uh, in this scenario. For example, if we deploy a VLooter in different uh, OpenStack in different uh, site line, the tenant uh, VLooter should be connected with each other, so the east-west traffic should be isolated. But currently, uh, no L2, L3 networking automation to isolate the traffic. And we also identified that the, uh, the code control for multi-site is missing. And uh, like others, like uh, IP microspace management, and uh, um, other resources, uh, synchronization among multiple sites, also missing. Not only for different uh, VNF in different uh, sites has these uh, issues, also for some VNF which is designed uh, to be deployed uh, in different uh, sites to achieve higher re reliability. For this kind of VNF, the L2, L3 networking also required for the, for example, for heartbeat uh, uh, synchronization or state uh, replication between different uh, components in different uh, sites. So the L2, L3 networking, uh, networking to isolate the tenant level's traffic is a common feature lacking in OpenStack. And uh, just mentioned, for example, for quota control and uh, uh, resource replication between different uh, OpenStack mission. So we in open, OpenFV multi-site uh, study these use cases and uh, identified like uh, uh, some feature um, missing in OpenStack and started some project to address these issues. For example, for identity service in multi-site scenario, how to achieve high availability VNF across different sites, and uh, geosite disaster recovery, and uh, resource synchronization, quota control. Um, we have projects like uh, Kimboard, Tricycle, and multi uh, tycle to address these issues. So next, welcome Slipria for tech. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. So 
So these are some of the gaps and challenges we have identified in multi-site OpenStack for handling the NFV use cases. So the last challenge uh, that needs to be handled in multi-site OpenStack is the end-to-end -end service orchestration. The, as a NFV orchestrator, uh, it needs to be able to manage multiple VNFs that are deployed across multiple OpenStack instances and chain these VNFs across these sites to provide an end-to-end -end service orchestration. Now, these service functions, uh, function chaining needs to be done for both uh, east-west traffic across data centers and also for the customer-facing traffic, which is the north-south traffic. In order uh, for us to handle these, uh, this kind of a requirement, the, challenges does not, the challenge does not end there. Once we deploy the service function chain, we need to modify, monitor, or heal the service chain. Uh, in case of VNF failures, the VNF goes down. We need to be able to update the service function chain uh, to move the VNF to a different data center. Uh, uh, and uh, based on customer uh, requirements or policies, we will need to modify or update the service chain, like scale the service chain uh, in terms of for VNF high availability or any new uh, high, uh, high availability requirements that come in into the OpenStack uh, multi-site. And finally, it needs to be resilient to the WAN uh, bandwidth, network delay, and throughput, and modify the service chain accordingly to provide this end-to-end -end service orchestration. So before we talk uh, about some of the existing projects that are trying to solve the OpenStack uh, multi-site challenges, let me give a quick overview about the Tacker project. So Tacker project is a NFE orchestration pro uh, project focused on VNF lifecycle management. It also has the monitoring and management a framework for deploying and management of VNFs. We also started working on some of the new features in Metaka, like supporting the Tosca template in VNF catalogs. Uh, we have also worked on providing the EPA support uh, for the VNFs uh, uh, with high performance requirements, like, such as CPU pinning, huge pages, and NUMA awareness. And finally, we support the auto resource creation, where the operator can just specify the resources such as flavor, network, and image, and then attacker can automatically go and uh, instantiate these resources for the operator in OpenStack. So now let's zoom into the multi-site WIM feature that we have started to work on in Tacker to handle some of these gaps that we discussed, which Joe uh, pointed to. So a quick overview of the feature, it provides a single pane of glass view for the operator to manage multiple OpenStack uh, sites uh, using the WIM management feature. Uh, the feature itself is easy to deploy in existing OpenStack uh, installations. Uh, the, uh, the operator can just go ahead and uh, ins in, uh, install Tacker on one single controller node and be able to talk to multiple OpenStack instances. And uh, Tacker itself heavily uses heat and keystone services in the background, so Tacker automatically uh, talks to the other OpenStack services such as heat and keystone on the remote sites to perform the resource orchestration functionality. So a bit of deep dive into the uh, multi-site feature itself. So in Liberty, Tacker was able to deploy VNFs in a single OpenStack site, and it was agnostic to remote sites within the telco infrastructure. So in Mitaka, what we did was uh, we started supporting this multi-site uh, VIM management where operators can deploy VNFs using a single Tacker controller in multiple OpenStack sites. So the local VIM just becomes another VIM the operator can register and use that VIM as an OpenStack instance to deploy VNFs. We also provide the explicit region support. So in case there are available regions uh, that are uh, provided in the OpenStack site, the feature can auto-detect these regions and allow the operator to place VNF on a specified uh, region within that OpenStack site. Of course, in uh, a telco infrastructure, they may, the, multi, the OpenStack sites may not be running the same versions. So we have, uh, the versions can go all the way back to Kilo, and Tacker's multi-site WIM feature is able to support each of uh, these releases, starting from Kilo. And once the resource requests come into Tacker server, it can gracefully downgrade or upgrade this re uh, resource request and uh, provision these VNFs 
on each of these remote OpenStack sites. So here is a bit of a zoom in on the attacker multi-site architecture. Here we are focused mostly on uh, focused on the NFVO uh, component here, uh, the green uh, block. So here, the multi-site uh, feature sits outside of the VNFM component. So attacker can still be used as a standalone VNFM uh, component. Uh, the operator can consume. And there's no dependency on the multi-site feature itself. And this is a pluggable driver framework. So in case uh, the operator wants to bring in a custom VIM uh, into Tacker and wants to deploy VNFs on their custom VIMs, uh, we have a pluggable driver framework where we can write our own uh, custom VIM driver and integrate that into the NFEO component. And you should be able to talk to uh, this custom VIM in the same way uh, the way it talks to the OpenStack VIM. And uh, the VIMs are shareable across tenants. So as an NFE admin operator, I could go ahead and register a VIM in the VIM dashboard and allow my users uh, to use this VIM uh, to deploy VNFs in their tenants. And uh, finally, we do support the horizon and the command line, uh, uh, command line support. So please uh, check out the multi-site feature uh, in Tacker. These are some of the Tacker resources uh, we have. I would encourage you to uh, install uh, Tacker and try out this feature. And any comments or feedbacks are appreciated for this. Thanks. Right, uh, so we'll continue with the second project, uh, which is called Kingbird. And uh, it's a new OpenStack project that provides a resource synchroniza synchronization and management for multi-region deployments. So uh, basically, it's re representing a reference implementation of some of the use cases uh, we have identified in OPNFE multi-site. And, well, our intention is to provide first an aggregated view on uh, distributed resources. So if I have VMs in region one and VMs in region two, I want to be able to get an aggregated list of those VMs with one single call. Uh, second is resource synchronization, uh, such as uh, security groups, images, flavors, to address the use cases. When uh, users want to boot uh, a VM in region two, let's say, uh, with an image from region one. So how do I address that seamlessly? And uh, last but not least is centralized quota management. And that part we already have implemented uh, in Kingbird in our first release. And I will uh, expand on this topic. So currently, quotas in OpenStack are defined on a per region basis. And further, these quotas are also spread across uh, the different services, right? So Nova is responsible for the computer-related quota limits, Neutron is responsible for the networking, and Cinder for storage. So when it comes to multi-region deployments, basically uh, it means that you have to go in and set quota limits in each region, in each service, and uh, well, that doesn't scale. and when a tenant reaches the maximum capacity in region one uh, and then simultaneously having still enough capacity in region two, he's not able to reuse this capacity. Uh, so thus there is no process for well, automatically or dynamically synchronizing the allocated quotas across the regions. And uh, in Kingbird, we actually uh, have implemented uh, this uh, centralized quota management function that allows you to dynamically adjust the quota limits. And on top of that, we also provide, uh, we call it global quota limits uh, across multiple regions. So now you don't have to set uh, your quotas in each region and in each service. You can define everything in Kingbird directly. And then the automatic adjustment will uh, happen uh, in the background, basically. Uh, so one of the most important requirements for us was that we shouldn't touch Nova and we shouldn't touch Neutron and Cinder. So we want to have minimal or zero impact on the existing OpenStack services. Uh, and that was our main motivation for design. Uh, and Kingbird itself has a requirement on an underlying infrastructure that Keystone has to be deployed centrally. Uh, but that goes in line with our uh, use cases in OPNFE multi-site, so we basically take this for granted. 
so that we have centralized authentication system. Right, uh, like I said, uh, minimal or zero impact on existing OpenStack services means that we are basically using existing APIs to dynamically balance quota values, to uh, calculate in real time the actual resource usage of tenants and use these values for synchronization. And on top of that, uh, we also pre-implemented APIs to set and delete and update quota limits the global quota limits, and these APIs basically are similar to the ones Nova has already, or Neutron, or, or Cinder. So if, you, if you're familiar with those, the structure of those APIs, it shouldn't be any problem for you to use Kingbird uh, quota management. Yeah, uh, when it comes to architecture, Kingbird is pretty much like any other OpenStack service. Uh, the main process here is a Kingbird API that provides, uh, well, APIs for managing global quotas and on-demand quota synchronization. So, for example, if you have performed an action and this action requires triggering uh, balance, rebalancing of quotas, you can just invoke this API and it will work. And the second process is Kingbird Engine, uh, which is responsible for all the dirty work, basically. So, for communicating to the OpenStack, services in each region, fetching tenant resource usage, and dynamically adjusting those values. So like I said, we've had our first release last week. It's a minor release. In that uh, release, we have uh, the baseline for the project as well as uh, quota management. So we already have APIs for setting global quotas and also re dynamically rebalancing quotas for Nova. Uh, in the future, we will proceed with covering the Neutron part and Cinder, and then move on to the use cases related to resource synchronization, images, uh, security groups, and so on. So you can follow the progress of the project on Launchpad. You can check out our status, blueprints, and uh, you can download the source code from GitHub. And uh, yeah, we invite you to participate. If you have any use cases or if you have any feedback, please let us know. It would be good to hear. Thank you. Uh, hello. Uh, let me talk about uh, Chasako. Uh, Chasako is a, a new project uh, in OpenStack. Um, Chasako is the OpenStack uh, API gateway. Um, Chasako can accept uh, all a OpenStack API requests. And uh, so Chasako can work together with uh, already built uh, application based on OpenStack API. For example, Tyco, uh, Magnum, Mulanu, and uh, uh, COI, SDK, and so on. Uh, Chasako most important feature is to offer is the L2 LSD networking uh, automation across different OpenStack instances in one site or in multiple sites. And uh, uh, except the L2 SD networking automation, uh, also provide the functionality to support, to support uh, data movement uh, from one site to another site, and the image replication, and that's so on. So uh, because the Chasako provides the uh, uh, OpenStack API, and uh, manage uh, multiple OpenStack instances uh, work like one in interconnected uh, OpenStack. Um, Chasako will uh, use the L2 gateway uh, to build the cross OpenStack L2 L3 networking. Um, net L2 gateway is a project uh, under Neutron and uh, this uh, API extension in Neutron to provide the L2 connection. Uh, currently, uh, L2 gateway only support uh, from the uh, overlay network to uh, the physical network. Um, but uh, uh, a new feature has been uh, delivered uh, in, in L2 network to support to connect uh, the overlay network uh, or um, to provide an network in different OpenStack instances uh, among L2 gateway 
so that uh, uh, the overlay network can extend to different OpenStack instances. But the uh, L2 gateway only work in one OpenStack instance. So the automation uh, between different OpenStack instances need uh, another layer software to do that. Uh, Chasako can finish this work. Uh, Chasako is the OpenStack API gateway. We have uh, Nova API gateway, Cinder API gateway, and the Neutron API gateway. Um, we reserve Nova API gateway is, uh, for the reason that uh, whenever you provision a new virtual machine, then Chasako can be aware of a new virtual machine will be provisioned. So we can do the networking at that time automatically. When uh, the new virtual machine provisioned in a new uh, bottom OpenStack instance, uh, Chasako plug-in in Neutron will create uh, um, li li regarding um, a Nova API gateway will create a L2 network in regarding OpenStack accordingly, and then update the network segment to the Neutron network. So in Neutron network, uh, the network will be consisted of different segments. If the tenant has resources in different OpenStack instances, that means uh, uh, they are virtual machine in different open stack instance connected to different uh, network segment. For example, in this uh, picture, um, network one one in, in the left open stack instance and uh, network one two in the right open stack instance. And the uh, L2 gateway driver in Chasako plugin, when detect that uh, the network has multiple segment and distributed in multiple different OpenStack instances, then L2 Gateway Driver will start, a, a, will start a synchronous job. This job is for the networking automation. This job will call the API in different OpenStack instances to do uh, the remote L2 Gateway connection configuring and uh, populate the IP and the mic in different L2 gateway. After the population and the remote connection establishment, then L2 gateway can understand uh, where the traffic should be forwarded to for the same uh, virtual machine in the same network, but distributed in different OpenStack instances in different OpenStack, in different sites. So uh, leverage the L2 network and the L3 network across different OpenStack instances. We can uh, move the data from one OpenStack instance to another OpenStack instance. We just uh, only need to create a virtual machine in different uh, OpenStack instance, and the virtual machine with transferring tool installed. This virtual machine attached to same network also L3 connection. Then the, trans the transferring virtual machine in different uh, OpenStack instances can communicate with each other. After that, we can attach the volume with the data to be transferred to the virtual machine. Then the transferring virtual machine can talk with each other to move the data from one site to another site. And uh, one project called uh, Conveyor uh, is uh, uh, being established uh, to provide the uh, data movement uh, functionality based on Chasako. So Chasako is one uh, open source project uh, in OpenStack, and uh, we are planning to apply a big tent project. So please come to contribute and uh, join us. Uh, you can find uh, all uh, resources in web from the uh, Launchpad BP and uh, to the source code in GitHub. Uh, we just uh, talked about uh, uh, several projects uh, I mean to address the multi-site issues and the challenges. Uh, all these projects uh, can work together in different uh, scenarios. For example, uh, if we have multiple OpenStack instances deployed in different sites, 
uh, running in multi-region model. That means no L2SD networking automation needed uh, across this uh, instance line. We can use TAC and Kingbird to uh, orchestrate uh, multiple OpenStack. And uh, if we need uh, the cross OpenStack uh, L2SD networking functionality, uh, even the automation line, we can use a Chateco to manage uh, multiple uh, interconnected uh, OpenStack instance and uh, work like uh, one OpenStack. Because the Chateco pro uh, can process and uh, accept uh, all OpenStack API, so Tech and uh, Kimbird can seamlessly work together with uh, Chateco. Um, this is the, uh, the different scenario uh, for different uh, combination of this uh, software. Okay, thank you. Mm. Question and uh, uh, regarding this uh, multi-site support, uh, the, my first question is. Uh, last time I checked, looks like there's no standard definition about the site concept in OpenStack. Uh, one way to view it uh, looks like it's just uh, for each site, we will have one keystone installation and across the site, there will be multiple instances of keystone, right? Uh, different site has uh, different uh, neutral. Neutral. So yeah. how about keystone? So Keystone should be isolated within each side, right? Uh, for Keystone, uh, we'll be used the uh, uh, federated Keystone or use the shared Keystone. Uh, shared Keystone means all of uh, OpenStack service will directly talk to this shared Keystone? <coughs> uh, Hello. Okay. So I, one of the use cases we have seen um, in NFE infrastructure is they want to use these kind of uh, multi-site uh, projects uh, in their existing installations. When you talk about the federated Keystone service, the, that's a day one configuration you, where you want to bring up your whole OpenStack cloud configured with a shared identity, identity service. So the, that does not scale when you already have OpenStack instances deployed. And some of the operators don't want to bring down all of their sites just to implement this shared Keystone service to solve the problem here when you want to have a shared Keystone service across all these sites. So here, the uh, requirement we are trying to address is uh, focused on the existing installations where they can have dedicated Keystone services running in their uh, sites. So that means if there's existing uh, installation of Keystone and uh, existing Keystone installation, it will just keep it? Yes. Okay. Uh, and if you have a shared Keystone uh, service, that can be configured as well, where we can talk to that uh, single Keystone service, and that can internally process the request on behalf of the other sites that are listening on that Keystone service. OK, thanks. OK. Uh, so if, if I wanted in this in this diagram right here, I, I see Nova a Nova and a Cinder API gateway. Let's say I wanted to extend that and actually distribute heat uh, heat stacks across multiple uh, OpenStack instances. How would I go about putting in a? Do I have to build something called a heat API gateway, or how would that work in TriCircle? Uh, for TriCircle uh, API gateway, it a uh, very and slim web service just receive the API and forward the request to the bottom open stack. But uh, uh, the API gateway will catch the routing information so that uh, in later for volume operation or for uh, virtual machine operation can redirect to the correct bottom open stack. Okay, but so does that mean basically these are special cases of API gateways and that if I want to use another subsystem, if I want to distribute calls from another subsystem, is there any special work I have to do in a tri-circle? Like, like heat is an example. Uh, yes, uh, API should be processed by tri-circle first because uh, so that the networking automation can be aware of when the virtual machine is provisioned. Otherwise, uh, the 
uh, network automation will not be possible. You, you need to, to do the networking immediately after the virtual machine is provisioned. Okay. Yeah. This is a very important Nova API gateway uh, to know the virtual machine boot request and then create uh, regarding uh, network one one in the right uh, open stack. Yeah, or if the virtual machine provisioned in the right open stack and create uh, uh, network one two in another open stack and then ask the uh, traffic plug in to connect this two segment into one L2 network. Okay, so what I'm, I'm actually thinking maybe a different layer than you're thinking. So let's say for a minute, I, I wanted to basically instantiate a heat stack on one of your lower, what are they called? Bottom, on one of your bottom instances, right? And mm -hmm. the only thing I want to do is I want to do a stack create up at the, and have TriCircle direct that to, the, to a bottom open stack instance. And then within that instance, Heat operates autonomously. It does its entire thing autonomously. Uh, yes, uh, there's some uh, slide uh, uh, not to show here. So maybe you have some question about that. It... Uh, the process is like this. If you create first, create a network first line, only one logical object in the uh, tricycle uh, plug in and the line. If you create a virtual machine attached to the network, then we create a network one one in the regarding open stack. Then update the net one with the segment of this part. Then create a new port for the virtual machine and create the virtual machine in the regarding bottom open stack with the Port IP okay. mic uh, allocated in the chat circle. Yeah. Okay. So okay. in my particular case, let's say I wanted to create a heat stack in bottom open stack, your left bottom open stack instance. The only thing that's going to come to try circle is a stack create. It distributes that, and every one of your steps one through six are all going to go on in that bottom open stack. Is is that is that an easy thing to support in try circle? Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. Okay, okay, all right, thanks. That's exactly, exactly. We want to be able to do that. We want to be able to basically just say, uh, uh, f f uh, uh, execute this heat, this heat template out in you know region A, which actually is a bottom open stack instance. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. 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 Thank you. Oh. I have two questions. One on the Kingbird. Uh, is the support for Kingbird done declaratively or programmatically? In other words, in your slide, you showed it, its integration explicitly with some of the other OpenStack services, such as Stacker, Nova, or whatever. So do they have to explicitly program to that interface, or no, the code the, happens declaratively? No, the, that was the main requirement, right? To keep the services intact and, and just use the APIs for Nova, Cinder, and Neutron. So the, the diagram that I showed basically uh, represents a like, connection, API connection from Kingbird to the OpenStack services. Yeah, this one. Yeah. So we don't uh, require any extra configuration from Neutron or Nova side. Was that your question? Yeah, for example, if a quota exceeds and somebody is trying to create a VM using other services, you'd be automatically honored, right? Yeah, well, well we have a periodic function that dynamically re rebalances quotas, right? So if you have it like the timeout is, let's say, two, two seconds or five seconds, depending on how uh, dynamic your cloud is, then uh, if you put a new VM, the, this will be calculated as a usage value, and uh, then we'll, we adjust the quota values accordingly. Okay. Okay. Thank you. The, the other question was tricircle. If you go to the final slide that you showed during the presentation, uh, in the final slide you showed tricircle as almost providing an abstraction for multiple open stack instances uh, to tackle, right? You showed uh, Vim 1 and Vim 2, and then 3, 4, 5, yes. providing an abstraction to Tracker, right? In not this one, if you go to the final slide that you presented. 
the Another final, Java. The pu putting all together. Okay. Thanks. The last one. Yeah, that one. So in this particular case, if the attacker has to configure VNFs in four, five, and six, does it have to explicitly be aware of that, or is TriCircle providing a level of abstraction, and attacker is only talking to TriCircle gateway, so that TriCircle can internally Tiker. talk to internal? Attacker sees TriCircle as yet another open stack instance. Yeah, just a deal with the TriCircle as another open stack. Yeah, so the, the orchestration beneath TriCircle is happening on TriCircle's behalf, so basically, Attacker doesn't see the underlying open stack. It's just see the tricycle as one open stack. Okay, but if it wants to place it, so on, how does it decide where to place the VNF? In which VM? Which VM? Among four, five, and six. So the way this is something we have to think through uh, thoroughly because the tricycle. Uh, plugin is so we want to integrate with tricycle as a plugin just like another whim driver yeah. so if we have the tricycle enabled and so what happens in tacker is the default whim driver you can specify it as open stack and probably tricycle will become another whim type which uh, tacker can talk to and you can provide the tricycle as a whim type to deploy your winners on those sites 456 uh, when you want to talk to the three sites below uh, tricycle mm -hmm. So, so that, is there an option that is, th does the EP API interface that TriCircle provides, does it give an option to say, okay, let me do it, default, I will decide on what whim to place, or does it say, okay, I really give an option, I manage these four whims, so I give an option to place which VNF, which VNF you want to place into which whim? Uh, well, I think, and Joe can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, so each, OpenStack like four, five, and six is represented in Tricycle as an availability zone. I had something to answer too. Is this on? Okay. It, the reason I was asking my questions about heat, yeah. so let's say I wanted to go on these different sites and I want to go uh, instantiate uh, VNFs on each so one of these sites, right? You want to do that as a, 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 a yeah. what do you call it, uh, an uh, autonomous instance, right? Yeah. And so the way, one way you could do this in, in Tacker is basically, Tacker takes, goes from, uh, what is it called, the, the top level template, the Tosca template, yeah. goes down to VNF templates, right? And there'll be a VNF template for each VNF, and then you take TriCircle and you direct that, you do a stack create with that VNF template, and that will create your VNF in a particular site. Yes, yeah. uh, but even if you want to explicitly say that I want to uh, boot a VM, let's say, on site four. Uh, site four is represented in TriCircle as an, ava as an availability zone. Yes. So you yeah. can even explicitly say that that VM in that availability zone make it happen and tri TriCircle would Absolutely. Ag yes. Agree. Agree. But, and that's all even passed up through heat, though, right? All that stuff is passed up yeah, through heat. Yeah. 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 He, heat, I think heat resides on the TriCircle level, so it, it, it will basically invoke TriCircle uh, APIs for talking to Neutron? No, that's not what I'm thinking. No. Okay. I'm thinking that the heat client is at the layer of TriCircle. Yes. The heat client does a stack create. The actual engine, the heat engines, are in sites four, five, and six. Uh huh, okay. So yeah. that's your deployment scenario. That's, that's what I'm thinking. Okay. okay. So, so uh, <clears throat> my next question, sorry. Uh, so is, is it all in Mitaka? That was my. Or is it a future roadmap, or is it all there? So the three projects are already working on the multi-site uh, use cases. Yeah. So we saw the project overview of how they're trying to solve the multi-site use cases. So the thing we will be focusing on in Newton is how these three projects can collaborate together to fulfill this picture, okay. what we uh, see here. There are these projects separately solving the multi-site use cases, but it's now important for uh, Tacker project to interact with the Kingbird or project like TriCircle to provide the end-to-end -end, uh, service orchestration. Okay, that will happen in Newton. Thank you so much. Yeah, appreciate it. Good presentation. Okay. So just a couple of clarifications. Uh, this driver that you mentioned for the TriCircle is it ML2? Is the driver ML2? Uh, driver. The L2. Uh, there mm -hmm. is a plugin that you mentioned, right? The yes. TriCircle. Yes. No yeah, yeah. Plugin is that ML2? Uh, it is it is the driver ML2 plugin? 
So can we, it coexist we, with other ML2 drivers? Uh, not a mechanism Java. We provide a new interface. For so she's asking about the Neutron API, the tricircle plugin. Yeah. The neutron so so neutron API is the same. Yeah. Okay. For example, if we have SRIO drivers, will it be able to handle both? question was since these were two different uh, independent open stack instances uh, and you are trying to extend your L2 or L3 how how are security groups handled so the L2 network mm. between open stack mm. sites how we can handle the security policies yeah how because they are independent so how do you handle when you say extend the L2 I, i'm not a country <laughs> okay so, well, huh? firstly, you can do it in, in Kingbird. Oh, oh, okay, you, you, you are talking about the security group. Okay. Uh, for security group, um, we deal with uh, it like this. Um, you know that uh, if you're using the remote security group, then all port uh, attached to this security group should be allowed on. Uh, in some ruler, you need to bypass. But uh, in another site, uh, you have no this port information. Um, so uh, in Chesco, we have uh, some um, uh, trade off. So we only provide uh, um, IP prefix based uh, uh, security group ruler, but not uh, based on the remote group uh, ID. Because uh, when you uh, have the Ruler with security group ID line, you have to look up all the ports belong to this uh, group ID. And uh, currently, uh, in, in production cloud, uh, mostly uh, the remote security group ID as a ruler is used for the default security group so that all virtual machines added to the same uh, security group can communicate with each other so the ruler uh, opened the port. Yeah. So uh, we have some trade off because uh, uh, when you um, uh, deal with the security group in different sites, uh, you have no report information. So we only um, accept the ruler with IP prefix based ruler. We, we, I think uh, it's, it should be uh, acceptable because the security group control should be based on uh, um, IP prefix scope, but not based on single uh, IP port. Yeah, we, otherwise it will be very difficult to manage so many ports. Yeah. So, uh, so many IP and port. Yeah. So another question is. Uh, sorry, I have a little problem uh, in, in listening. Maybe we can discuss okay. after the meeting individually. Yeah. Okay, thank Just you. One quick question. I know I'm very, very close to the lunch time. Okay. Uh, the other thing I wanted to ask you about Tacker and uh, Tricycle is, you know, the VNF monitoring because. Uh, the VNF manager is not just for creating or deleting, but it has to do ongoing monitoring for, you know, scaling or recovery. So what features we have today uh, in Mitaka for doing that, and particularly in that multi-site case where you are creating uh, the, the VNFs and services through different projects, who will do the monitoring and how the recovery or scaling can be done? So right now, um, Tacker does support monitoring uh, framework. And the way it looks is the L2 uh, networking between the Tacker uh, controller node and the site, there is connectivity between the two um, uh, instances, the, uh, the Tacker node and the OpenStack site. So Tacker could just monitor, trigger the monitoring uh, for the VNF on the remote instance in its own VNFM component based on the driver you uh, provide. But in multi-site, there can be a complex monitoring use cases. So we could use silometer based alarms. And we are looking into it of how we can integrate it as a plugin within Tacker to manage monitoring across different sites. So that is something we are 
looking forward to in the Newton cycle. Yeah, I know it's not a, it's not an easy yeah. answer, but uh, the other thing is if uh, in future if the customer can deploy any VM, we, we can't dictate that this is a VNF you need to use. So are we going to define any standards for the VNF so that you know Tacker or Tricycle can monitor it? For example, SNMP or you know there are standards uh, so that you can pick up the messages and monitor. So, right. so would that be? So we are having a developer uh, session happening today in Tacker uh, okay. for some of these questions which you asked. I think these are very valid questions. And uh, we plan to talk about uh, some of the standards of how we can improvise the monitoring policies, and especially for the different types of VNFs that are out there. And since we have integrated the Tosca template in Vitaka, that's something we want to work on uh, to improvise our monitoring for some of the different complex VNFs. So you should be uh, attending the TACR session today. You're welcome to join and provide your inputs there. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you.